Hello and welcome to this brief presentation on creating a decision hierarchy. So decision hierarchy is really about laying out your decision. And we'll use PowerPoint to make it. So here I can pick this triangle shape from the shapes menu. And I'm just going to create a little triangle here. And I'll click on Format Shape. Let me get the fill out. And I'll use simple lines to make three sections. This is one section. And here is another one. This graphic is going to help us lay out three kinds of decisions. In the middle, we have a current decision. In the bottom, we have our future decision. And we center it. And on top, we have our givens. Givens are decisions that have already been made. So think of these as your past decisions, if you will. So at every stage, we want to record what are decisions that we've already committed to. And so every statement in a given and current and future decision is about what we what we need to do so given decisions uh, must start with we will or i will do something or not do something so the choice here is not do slash do so we or i will do or not do something so this is how we can have multiple givens. Each and every one of them must start like this. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Current decisions are about what we want to figure out. So this is more of what do we need to do right now. And this will this will be of a kind what should what should I do? Of course, the question will be more specific, but it will be a variant of what should I do or what should. And the future decision is really about um, what are we going to do next after we've made the current decision. So this is clarity on decisions that are just around the corner. So what do we do? What do I slash V do next? So this is our decision hierarchy, and we need to now fill it out. So as you can see, it is really simple to use PowerPoint. You can also do this on Google Docs if you don't have PowerPoint. So simply create a new presentation file. And here, I'm just going to delete this. You want to insert an image. Uh, actually, we want to insert a drawing, and here we will find the shapes we need, which are <laughs> remarkably similar to PowerPoint. So here is the triangle we want to use, and we can make our three lines. There, and here we can put givens. So I type givens, and press enter, and there it is. This is my current decision. And this is my future decision. And this is of the form this is the form I slash we will do slash not do something. As we showed earlier, current decisions of what should I slash we do. The future decisions are off the form. What should I slash we do next? So as you can see, this is very useful. And there it is. It's in my slide. And I can save it as my decision hierarchy, share it with friends, and get feedback. So. We've, to recap, we've basically shown how to use, how to draw decision hierarchies using two tools. One is with PowerPoint, and the other is uh, with Google Docs. Now, to very briefly talk about the biggest issues in drawing the decision hierarchy is that 
people often make a mistake of not placing decisions in the Gibbons triangle. So they will often write things like, we care only about profits or something like that. Well, you need to frame it as commitment to action. What is it that you're going to do or not do? That's what we want to reveal in the Gibbons. Uh, this is actually quite interesting because it's not necessary that the givens will come out in the first conversation, but as we engage with our decision frame, we will slowly start to discover the assumptions that we are making. And that's the value of drawing a decision hierarchy, that we can discover assumptions that need challenging. Moreover, in the current decision, one of the things we've found again and again in the decision analysis community is that a lot of times people are talking about decisions, but people in the room have no clue what the decision is. And so a lot of time is wasted talking about uh, decisions in an abstract sense. And it is very important to start decision conversations with a tool like the decision hierarchy, where we are extremely clear what is it that we have already committed to doing, what is it that we want to figure out how to do or what to do, and what is it that's coming up next. And that clarity will focus our conversation, save a lot of time, and help us resolve the decisions that we are facing. That's just the starting point. If we are not clear about our decision, then no amount of our engineering prowess will help us get to the right answers. So hopefully this will give you a quick start into drawing decision hierarchies for any decisions that you face. Uh, highly encourage you to try it and see for yourself what it does to discussions within uh, the personal context or the organizational context. Thank you very much for watching.